Hello, welcome to this video where we introduce the concept of a plane and how to figure out the equation of a plane. Just like we had the equation of a line, we had to figure out what we needed to find it. Let's start with that same process. What do we need to find the equation of a plane? There's two things we need. First up, we need to have a point that's on the plane. I call that point P naught, generically with the coordinates uh, X naught, Y naught, Z naught. But we also need a vector that is orthogonal to the plane. We use the letter N for that vector, and it's called the normal vector to the plane. Generically with A, B, C as its components. All right, so you have a point out in space. Here's your X, Y, Z framework. And if you connect that point, just like we saw with the equation of lines, if you connect that point to the origin, we have a vector. We call that vector R naught. Go out and grab any other random point. Connect that point with the origin. That's called the vector R. The other point is generically X, Y, and Z. We're looking for the plane that can contains both of these points, a description about all the points that are on the plane that um, that contains that point P. Um, I'm about to introduce the normal vector in one second. This is all the exact same thing we did before for lines. Um, at, and we also uh, connected these two. We have the vector connecting the two from the vector from P naught to P. And we said um, that vector before had something to do with the direction vector for the line. Now we can look at it as basically a combination of these two vectors. Um, be careful about the orientation. If you take the vector R and subtract the vector R naught, you'll get the vector P, P naught to P. R minus R naught is P naught to P. Or another way to say it is that if you take P and add R naught to it, you'll get the R vector. All right, great. So what we're looking for is a plane. Generically, when you draw planes, you draw a parallelogram. Okay. And so here's where we introduce the normal vector into the mix. I know the point is on the plane. And so at that point, what I'm going to draw in is a vector that is orthogonal to the plane. It's orthogonal to every vector that's in the plane. In particular, what we care about is the fact that it's orthogonal to the blue vector P naught P. Imagine basically the, the point P being able to move anywhere throughout the plane. No matter what's going on, that vector that's being altered P naught to P, that vector still will be in the plane and the normal vector will be orthogonal to that. All right, now let's go with the uh, V brace notation, IJK notation. Let's figure out what are the components of each of these vectors. First up, R naught is the vector that goes from the origin to P naught. So X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Next up, R, the vector that goes from the origin to the generic point P. That's the vector x, y, z. The vector p naught to p, you are to subtract r minus r naught. So x minus x naught and y minus y naught and z minus z naught. Doing great. And the vector n is your normal vector, and that's your a, b, c. All right, wonderful. The connection between the normal vector and the vector that's in the plane is that they are orthogonal. A quick way to know whether two vectors are orthogonal is to take the dot product. It should be equal to zero. And so with this setup, we're going to force that to happen. The normal vector dotted with P naught to P, more commonly known as R minus R naught, that'll be equal to zero. Guaranteed. We can distribute have n dot r minus n dot r naught, and then add that guy over. And this could be a way of representing the equation of the plane. Not a very popular one, but it is called the vector equation of the plane. Okay, let's get a more useful one by 
going back up to the line where we have the dot product and let's writing out let's write out exactly using our v break notation let's dot in with the p naught to p vector we would have a times x minus x naught and b times y minus y naught and c times z minus z naught is equal to zero this is reminiscent of like having a um, point slope equation, like y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. That's, what, that's what, kind of what this is like. It's called the scalar equation of the plane. Not as popular as the one that we're going to have at the bottom here. This, our, the one at the bottom is going to be our go-to. Take this equation and multiply it all out. AX minus AX naught, BY minus BY naught, CZ minus CZ naught equals to zero. Now let's collect terms. We have AX plus BY plus CZ. And then all these other terms have a negative on them. We can take that negative out. AX naught and BY naught and CZ naught. Should be equal to zero. And lastly, we're just going to recast what's in that parentheses as, uh, well, negative that. That's going to be what we call D. And so AX plus BY plus CZ plus D is going to be equal to zero. And this is called the linear equation of the plane. All right, that's going to be our go-to. Um, because we're going to have on hand the six different numbers there, A, B, C, X not, Y not, Z not. So once you have those on hand, then the equation in the form of, you know, AX plus BY plus CZ, that part's already there. You got your A, you just multiply it by X, just write an X to it. Your B, these A, B, and C correspond to the coefficients on X, Y, and Z. The only mystery then is what the last variable is, D. And if you look above, basically it's going to be um, what you get by multiplying AX not, BY not, CZ not, adding all those up and taking the opposite. Let's see an example. Might be able to just make it through one example. I like to make it through two. We'll see. Um, of calculating the equation of a plane. All right. Our setup is going to be we have two lines. Okay. And these are intersecting lines. We'll call it that. And we want to find the plane that contains these two lines. What do we need? To find any plane, we need a point that's on the plane, and we need the normal vector for the plane. Hidden in the equations of these two lines are multiple points and multiple vectors. What do we choose? Well, when it comes to the point, we have two to choose from. Just pick one. The point could be 3, 5, negative 1, or it could be 8, negative 6, 5. When it comes to the vector, we can't just pick one of these two guys. These vectors are in the plane. We want a vector that is orthogonal to the plane. Orthogonal to every vector that's in the plane. In particular, orthogonal to these two vectors. How do you get a vector that's orthogonal to two given vectors? You take the cross product. So that's what we'll do. Call the one guy U. Call the other guy V. Let's take the cross product where we do cofactor expansion, throwing i, j, and k in our first row. And then what we'll get out is expanding on i, we get 3 plus 16, minus 16, minus 16. Um, then we expand on j, and we get negative 1 plus 8, but we have to put a negative on the j um, expansion. And then when we expand on k, we get 4 minus 6. And so we end up with the cross product being a negative 13, a negative 7, and a negative 2. Now, who's to say we had to do it in that order? U and v, U then V. We could have done V cross U. Remember how they, they're opposites of each other. Um, so we can get the normal vector that is negative 13, negative 7, negative 2, or we can get the normal vector that is 13, 7, 2. All right, call this your normal vector N. And in your equation, it's AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals zero, where the unknowns are A, B, C, and D. You just found the A, B, C. 
the, the normal vector's components. So you already know your equation. It's, it's negative 13x minus 7y minus 2z. You just have to figure out what d is. It's kind of reminiscent of having like y equals mx plus b. Knowing a point and knowing the slope, you have your y, you have your m, you have your x. You just got to go figure out what b is. That's what this is. You have your a, you have your b, you have your, your, your uh, c. You just got to figure out what d is. And we're going to figure it out is by taking our point, either of these two points. Uh, let's take the first point, 3, 5, negative 1. See, this is supposed to be true for all points that are on the plane. 3, 5, negative 1 is on the plane. So if we plug that in, that'll take place of the x, y, and z, leaving us only with d to figure out. And a negative 39 and a negative 35 and a positive 2 get combined to be 72. Or well, negative 72, but we push it to the other side, saying that d is equal to 72. So now you have your equation. Negative 13x, negative 7y, negative 2z, plus 72. It's equal to 0. If for some reason you don't like that, if you ever find that your normal vector can be, you know, have, has a multiple in common that you could factor out, all that's affecting is the magnitude of the normal vector or the direction of it. It's still normal to the plane. So I could have seen all the negatives in my normal vector and made them all positive. Instead of taking the normal vector, I could have taken its opposite. That's perfectly fine. It's really helpful if you have a constant multiplier, something different than one or minus one, that you could pull out of every component that'll make the number smaller. This is the answer to the question, but we could also take the opposite of it or any, com com every, any multiple of the equation would give us the same plane. Uh, this video has gotten kind of long. Let's go ahead and stop it. I want to do another example, but we'll save that for the next video. Uh, my name is Nakai Rimmer, helping you through this journey. In this journey right now, we're just looking at an equation of planes, but we're headed towards uh, much more difficult material. Please, if you have any trouble, just let me know. Comment down below. Reach out to me. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll be sure to uh, see you in the next video. Many more videos coming.